Hello, tech friends, and thank you for tuning in to Emerging Technologies in Business, where we take a deep dive into different technologies that are impacting businesses today and in the very near future. I'm your host, Brock Reine, and this podcast is brought to you by Kincannon XR. Let's talk tech. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode. Today, we're going to do a once-over with the Microsoft HoloLens 2. Let's check it out. All right, so here we go. HoloLens 2 review. So pretty neat, great product from Microsoft. I want to thank our friends over at Ingram Micro for hooking us up with the ability to play around with one of these things, really get to understand it. For $3,500, it's mainly utilized in the enterprise space due to its price point. So for now, it really eliminates itself from consumer use, honestly. Um, But it shows us that augmented reality has come an insanely long way, but also still has a long way yet to go. Now, Microsoft calls this mixed reality, but HoloLens doesn't have any VR features, but the tech inside of the HoloLens is pretty similar to that of the Oculus Quest 2 or Pico 3. The HoloLens 2 is a device that's ahead of its time, really, but that also presents an issue. That's a bit of ahead of its time. The content isn't nearly as available as its counterparts, and a far better fit than its pre- uh, predecessor, though, than the HoloLens 1, which was just overall uncomfortable. Microsoft really took a step forward with the HoloLens 2, in which the pad that rests on your brow really does a good job of improving comfort and keeping the headset light. Um, and honestly, the, the back part with the tightening really seems to be what the universal sure fit is that people are moving to. Um, it does have a transparent design with a slightly darker color being behind the glasses and the transparent lenses do onboard computing and storage is here in the back of the device. Uh, HoloLens 2 offers somewhat of a limited field of view and the ability to show objects that are opaque, sometimes it struggles with. Okay, so let's talk about the not so great things. The, The field of view is something left to be desired with only 43 degrees horizontally and 29 degrees vertically. It does make it feel like they're utilizing the smallest slice out of the pizza, but Sometimes it does make it difficult when you're opening up a a program where you've put those items. Sometimes you have to look around to find them. But the longer that you utilize the device, you do pick up on it pretty quickly. And I genuinely see this being less of an issue because this device will be utilized really for work and less than some sort of overt gaming console, realistically. So I will also say that typing takes a bit to get used to. Um, You utilize your index finger, which doesn't always seem to register as flawly as I would want it to at first. But once you get the hang of it, it's really pretty smooth sailing. Uh, I really do enjoy the visuals, the interactions in comparison to like a PC or a VR would expect. But you get used to them in the long run. And it's primarily for work, like I was saying before. It's not going to be a gaming device. Um, battery life is one of those things that seems to vary by user and by use case. It really, I guess, comes down to what you're doing with it. And while I can keep mine up and running for two to three hours, depending on what I'm doing, I can say probably safely, like an expectation should be one to two total hours, um, is what you should really expect. And when your battery starts to get low, you do start to see a little bit of jitter that starts to occur. Um, It was almost always when the battery life was struggling or near the end of one of my trial sessions. You know, I think it's important to say that every XR headset truly is different. And every different style of device has practical uses that they can be utilized for and use cases that are going to fit their need. And with the HoloLens 2, it gives you the ability to flip up the see-through lenses like I showed you before in case of low light situations. And it gives the users in automotive, construction, oil and gas, and healthcare sectors the ability to utilize this updated technology while easily moving the glasses up or down for safety needs, which is, you know, the stereotypical VR doesn't offer right now simply because it's fully immersive. It makes HoloLens 2 a really great device for productivity and education users. All in all, Microsoft HoloLens 2 has definitive applications in the enterprise space, but don't get in a rush to expect this device to be on the consumer market. The rumor has it that uh, Microsoft was going to partner with Samsung for the consumer-based XR hardware, but that partnership fizzled out in October 2021, which scraps the plan for the HoloLens 3. Lastly, 
I've been seeing what's being developed like in Canon XR for HoloLens, and I think it's a brilliant use case, not only in the automotive sector, but also in oil and gas, manufacturing, and construction, and that's really just naming a few. So keep your eye out for more news from Canon XR for their latest version of Service Assist XR built for the HoloLens 2. That's going to do it for today. I hoped you liked our roundabout about the HoloLens 2. I do want to thank King Cannon XR for sponsoring our podcast. You can find them on socials at King Cannon XR, or you can find our podcast on socials as well at ETIB Podcast. That's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode on the HoloLens 2. I've been your host, Brock Reining. We're going to talk some more emerging tech next time. Bye, everybody.